back to Ina Bear Farm. We are installing our rain catchment cistern today. It's pretty exciting. And so Jack is my assistant for the day. He's been good help so far. <laughs> he, um, he's got a really important job coming up here in a minute that we'll tell you about. Um, but let me catch you up really quick. So this is a 1550 gallon poly plastic cistern we had delivered the other day. We created a pad for it to sit on with crushed rock, uh, leveled the ground, put down some treated two by fours, filled it with a couple inches of crushed rock, um, just to have a level pad for it to sit on and make sure that it wasn't sitting on any like really big rocks that could warp and ultimately destroy the bottom of the tank. We have it facing our back gutter here of the house on this side. We're gonna put the intake in the, the service hole that's used. Get up here and show you that. So you have the large service hole where you can open the entire thing here, but we're just gonna pop open the small one and use that as an intake. Lots of different ways to do this. Um, we kind of talked to a, quite a few other people that have set these up at their properties and that was like the most popular way and it made the most sense to me. So facing downhill, we'll walk around and show you. We put our overflow on this side. And for this, we used a four inch hole saw to cut a hole in this hard plastic on the side here. And then we just used one of these um, three inch PVC rubber joiners that fit really perfectly and nice and snug inside that hole. And so we can put a, a three inch PVC 90 degree elbow here and just tighten that up with the hose clamp. It was kind of a perfect fit, uh, just something we came up with at the hardware store. And now we are doing the outlet, which Jack's gonna help me with here in just a second. And so close to the bottom, but not all the way to the bottom because there is a little bit of curvature in the tank and some sediment that will sit down there. We've cut our hole for our bulkhead fitting. We used a one and three quarter hole saw for that to fit this bulkhead. And we checked it to make sure that it fit just a minute ago. And it does, it's a good fit. And so now we're going to, we have to get it on the inside to come out this way, which is um, takes a little bit of creativity. There's a few different ways you can do this. We are running some wire up through the tank to the service hole. And then once I have it, Jack's gonna feed it to me at the service hole. Once I have it, I can slide this piece down the wire over here to the, um, to the exit. And then we will, um, we'll be able to pull it through and put the rest of our fittings together. Um, and also just worth mentioning, like we filed down some of these extra plastic shavings and things because those can get in the way of your seal and uh, end up with a leak. And so we'll come right back and show you how we pull that through here just in, this, in just a second. Hang with us. So we switched it up a little bit. Jack decided he wanted to, to go inside the tank. So I figured, well, that'll work. We'll just have him go in there. So he's gonna hand me the bulkhead fitting through the hole and I'll pull it through while he's in there. And the bonus was we got him in there to sweep up the plastic shavings. So that's good. We don't have to worry about that sitting in the sediment. Thanks, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we got the bulkhead in there. Jack held it in place. I just tightened this with um, the pliers that I have. I don't have the channel locks, but those are good for something like this. Uh, not supposed to over tighten, so We'll leave it where it is right now and then check it for leaks in a little bit. Our uh, next fitting, we're doing this with um, three fourths inch, or one, no, sorry, one inch pipe. PVC schedule 40, one inch. Um, and so I did put some, some plumber's tape on the threads. Some people say you don't need it, but it's always just kind of good extra help and so we're just gonna thread this first piece on this we're just gonna go hand tight and then we'll um, maybe do like an one more turn pliers but you know it feels pretty snug so 
I think I'm just going to test it like that for now. Um, this pipe we're not gluing because I kind of like the idea of just having it be able to be removed if I need to just an extra maneuverability to clean it out or anything like that. Um, and so I'm just going to show you the other pieces here and then we'll show you the completed thing in just a moment here. Um, so I'm not going to glue this. So this just slides on to another thread fitting, goes to our one inch PVC ball valve so that we can turn it off and on, which goes to an adapter that brings us to another adapter, which is the hose adapter. Um, and so there's different ways to do this with all different sizes. I just wanted this fitting because when I'm not using the hose, it was just kind of easy to do like a one inch and you know, I could like, use this to fill up buckets or whatever, get a decent flow rate. Um, but you could do a three quarter inch and just go straight to the hose adapter and not need this one extra piece, but it's really just one piece, not that big of a deal. So we're just gonna put some thread on, uh, some uh, tape on these other threads, put this all together, put that hose adapter on there, and then we'll show you the finished product in just a minute. So hang on. All right, us. so this is our finished product for now, our um, outlet. So we've got the ball valve here that we can turn on and off. Hose adapter so we can hook a hose directly up to that. Um, what we're gonna be primarily using this for is a reservoir of water. Um, so for, I mean, one thing, just catchment, the um, sustainability of catchment in general, using more rainwater as opposed to having to use city water, um, using the higher quality rainwater as opposed to the city water to water our food forest. Um, so we've been doing that with a lot of buckets uh, from time to time uh, during the dry season. And we might use this in that same way, just attach a hose, fill up the buckets with a hose. We can run the hose out to the food forest and um, you know maybe put a little like turn off valve out there or something and fill the buckets up out there. Sometimes what I have, my, have one of my kids do is just work the valve up here and I'll tell them, turn it on, turn them off. Um, and then we eventually may hook this up to a pump and then hook that pump up to our uh, irrigation system that runs out into the garden. So if you're interested in setting up a drip irrigation system for a garden, uh, you can check out our video on installing our drip. Um, we'll probably do a second part to this video just to show how we're going to um, do the inflow from the gutters to the tank here. Um, it's gonna be pretty simple. It's just some PVC coming down from the gutters and then a screen to catch any debris. We don't get a ton of debris in our gutters, but um, first we wanna check, make sure that this is not leaking and uh, adjust anything as necessary. And then finally we will fix the, uh, finish the, um, the outflow, the overflow and just run that probably for now down into the somewhere in the food forest where it can be of some better use so that's our video for now um leave a comment if you have any questions or any helpful hints or suggestions and otherwise come see us again here really soon at ida bear farm aloha